So I'll leave you with up here. Thank you very much, uh, Norella. Uh, welcome, everybody, ladies and gentlemen. I'm really honored to be here this morning. Uh, welcome all the participants from maybe different countries, their students, their professors, their uh, FAB City Network members. Uh, a circular business model and an ecosystemic architecture is about design what design or social design, interactive design, different kind of design can bring to the uh, Fab Lab network uh, uh, in the manufacturing industry. So my workshop plan, and there was a plan for maybe one hour and a half. And uh, I just uh, learned or uh, I'm aware of the short presentation of 20 or 25 minutes that Norella told me that I had this morning. But here is my plan. I will, uh, I'm sorry if I go too fast, I will try to focus on certain slides just to make the point for uh, the, the main point of the architecture of my presentation. My first point is a short introduction on the Fab Lab context in the global manufacturing domain. The part one is how to balance the industry 4.0 with the global societal challenge of society 5.0. 4.0 is from Germany, 5.0 is from Japan, it's, and it's around global sustainable goal. My second point is, what are the contribution of communication and transformation science for the digital transition? My point is, how can we link or better link or integrate different science concerned by the human factors and the technological factors. There's no way we got to develop uh, separately uh, the digital transition from the ecology and sustainable development goal. My third point, Fab Lab is a transdisciplinary and trans transformative domain. What can we do? I'll present a use case or a case or just an example to be modest, a circular business model applied to the Fab Lab sector uh, from uh, Maria Jesus um, Gutierrez and uh, other researchers. If I have the time, I will present some complementary models to this circular business model and just give some great line of a possible agenda for future research and uh, innovation. Here is a design thinking process in Montreal in uh, 2019. We had a, a meeting for the Fab City coordination and preparation. And, uh, you know, we were just facing the challenge we are facing this week, two years ago. And we start to, uh, yesterday I have a good news. Uh, Montreal is now a fab city, an official fab city. And I'm really proud about it. I'm a professor resident, a resident professor in community uh, of the Communotic, which is the organizer or the coordinator of the event in Montreal, and we were studying the movement of Fab City and the Fab City movement transformation in territories. And around me, I was I was an old boy because around me there were so young people, so many young people from uh, the college level to the doctoral level, and some uh, real entrepreneur uh, from 20 to 30 years old. And I said. We are going to face in the year to come a real great design challenge, a global design. Everybody is speaking design in Europe, but not very much in the social sciences in Quebec and Montreal. Social sciences are critical social sciences, but we need to keep in mind that design could be very useful in applied science or communication applied science. And when we talk about transdisciplinarity, we're not talking just about inter or pluridisciplinarity. We're talking about intervention in the real world. So the manufacturing industry is interesting because when we were imagining, imaginons Fab City, imagining Fab City Montreal, I was talking about what can we do to design some new business model for the real economy. 
In rescaling the global manufacturing sector in Fab City, here are the works that have been done since three or four years uh, in uh, the Fab City network to understand the recursive or the, the feedback or the retroaction between different sectors, like what are the domestic production, 3D printing, we're, we're speaking about 3D printing, but we have also social fabrication, new institution, new service, new digital organization. We have to think a circular fabrication. I don't have time for this presentation to explain what our circular economy, but sharing economy, collaborative economy, economy 3.0 are all terms around this new economy that we are facing in the next year to come because we want the human factor, just not a human factor, but a, the human cloud in the center between nature and technology. We studied the supply chains for batch production in the traditional industry, the global supply chain, the traditional industry, and what could be a circular business model in the Fab Lab uh, when we applied the works of some researcher like Maria Jesus Gutierrez from Spain in our manufacturing sector from the Fab Lab industry. Second, I was just studying the linear model from the designer, a renowned elite. The designer in the city are the engineers, uh, the profession that are very in the center of our future are now the engineer, uh, computer people, architects of all kinds of architect. Uh, and we had a linear, you know, uh, supply chain or fabrication chain uh, in the traditional industry. But now we have more flexible factories on demand. We are calling the industry 4.0 in small and medium industries. Uh, we're calling about uh, design for people or universal design. We're calling about Fab Lab in the service of the betterment of humankind. I'm talking about new products, service, and social system for uh, with eco design, geo design, all kinds of design that you can bring but not bring to the specialist, but how can you bring different kind of design in the social science, which is my domain, but more than that in the world, how can you bring design for people the way we can orient our future, anticipate the future? I'm talking about not just previsional states, but anticipation. Uh, Pierre, je peux me permettre une French. Uh, il reste à peu près 10-12 minutes si tu veux passer uh, okay. uh, ton, ton message. OK. And now, uh, on m'a donné un peu plus, on m'a donné 25 minutes. Donc, uh, alors, the point is from, uh, uh, je ne sais plus le nom du, de la personne, je crois, si tu peux m'aider pour le large scale uh, démonstrer. Thomas Diaz. It's Thomas Diaz. Thomas Diaz. City. Uh, pr proposed to the European Commission and UNESCO this kind of work package uh, to make large-scale demonstrators. So the work to the manufacturing industry or in the manufacturing sector has been very strong since three or four years. And I don't have time to go into all the work package, but much work has been done. Let me just uh, demonstrate what is the big question around the work we have to do in the next year to come. How to balance the industry 4.0, the 3D printing industry, with the global societal challenge, climate change. But this morning, this will be an example from the manufacturing industry and the sustainable development goals in the society 5.0. I just say in saying that, that it is important to have maybe an 18th uh, global sustainable goal around communication and fake news, because we're talking between different pays. 
the countries in the uh, in the manufacturing industry, and we have to build together to co-create. Uh, an enormous challenge is uh, by abduction. Abduction is the complement of deduction and induction in science as a way to invent better human-oriented world. So society point point zero to date, humankind has lived in four types of society, hunting, agrarian, industrial, and information. Digital transformation era, the fifth stage. This is the society 5.0. We want the human between nature and the, the digital transformation. In my country, in Canada, a lot of things have has to be done in that sense. Society 5.0 tried to pass from digital transformation to the creativity and imagination of diverse kind of stakeholder of, of actors, of uh, actors from different parts of the society. We pass from pr simple problem solving to value creation in every sector. When we talk about value creation, it's not just money, like we're doing some chimeric innovation by these days around the risk, around the economic factor. We need to put back the psychological and societal and environmental factor in our development, in our manufacturing industry. So I'm taking this slide for K. Dynren, policy and action. You will see after my conference, what are the difference between 4.0 to society point 5.0? The main point is we're trying to build an imaginative society with the new technology. So we're trying to build a society where anyone can get opportunities anytime, anywhere, like we're doing this morning. A resilient society where people can live and pursue challenge and security and a sustainable and environmental harmony. But what does this mean? in the industrial uh, domain. So in the different sustainable development goals, in my own theory, we have 15 aspects, but in the sustainable development goals uh, from United Nations, uh, we have a lot of reforms to do. One of this is the number seven in society 5.0 that you have under your eyes, is the manufacturing in service. Then one of the main point is distribution of abilities will enable individual and small companies to provide high level of goods and service. System will be established enabling consumers to easily and affordably make one of a kind items. Business models, which is my point this morning, will be based on service and human dignity, not hardware. Harmony, human dignity is the way we got to build our future manufacturing industry because we have so many people sick, so much social pathologies in our organization. People after the pandemic are so tired, uh, uh, ill, uh, anxious. And we have to take care about the human factor, but the psychological factor, we have some to restart the economy. We need to have some healthy people Let's make the point with communication and transformation science. I am building a MOOC, a multi-online open course, where I choose the word more than transition. It's like the transition will have, uh, humanity will have to adapt to a transition. It's not the point. We have to build, to co-create this transition in all the sciences, not all uh, the things have to be done in artificial intelligence or robotics or hard computing. If you want to build a sustainable manufacturing in the Fab Lab network, I'd like to just show, and maybe it's the main point of my presentation. I don't know if I have the time. My friend that I, uh, uh, I asked uh, my, uh, my friend Geoffroy Garon to help me in this animation. He told me you only have five minutes, isn't it, Norella? I have only five minutes more. You have 10 minutes. 10 minutes, okay, yeah, I'll, give you I'll 10 be minutes. a good boy. I'll be a good boy <laughs> for you from <laughs> Colombia. Okay, what is community informative design? Um, I just put the, uh, sorry. 
Transformative science is defined as a specific kind of science that does not only observe and describe societal transformation process like we do in social sciences. We have critical social sciences. It's like the dog crying after the train. But what are the solutions? We got to get into the train. And we got to initiate and catalyze different types of design. Maybe you heard about engineering design, but not very much or around social design, which is or which need a global engagement from the people from all spheres of society. Transformative science or transdisciplinary science aim to improve our understanding of social system and the political transformation and the digital transformation process to simultaneously increase societal capacity to reflect on them. Communication transdisciplinarity and transformative science is situated between the different spheres or space. When I'm thinking of spaces, we have a digital sphere or spaces, but we have also psychological space. We cap the world. We appropriate the world by our eyes and senses, but we are building in doing that a social space after we're building a cyberspace and after a robotic space and after a noosphere as uh, the fields of uh, the, the, the files of uh, Edgar Morin and uh, the other one um, it's the very important Théard de Chardin that I have built a thinking space what is the thinking space for a digital transition in the manufacturing industry okay I've built a book that you can find it and that I tried to make a synthesis this morning, but this is a 600 pages in 2017. Um, just my motivation is we have an absence of integrated methodology and a semantics adapted for students and researchers in the social science and the communication fields. We were facing rapid technological change 10 and even 30 years ago when I began to teach and a lack of direction in the digital social system. Because don't forget the thing that when we build a platform like this morning, we're building a social system, maybe an ephemer, an ephemer social system, but we are building digital institution when we're building Fab Lab. Transdisciplinarity is not only putting discipline together. If we want to change the world and we want to change it now. When I was young, that was a modus operandi. There was a lack of logic of design in the social science. Design is not just a scholarly gap in the social science or a source of overinterpretation of transcendental logic like Kant or a logic dialectic like Marx. Is it, it is a particularly pressing problem because of a significant shift in the way we prioritize forms of knowledge and forms of sustainable manufacturing organization in the communication science, but in all the science that we, like management, like that, that we brought into contribution when we build a manufacturing industry, we're talking about organization, rules, activities, uh, norms, community, priorities, etc., sanctions, law. So I don't have a lot of time, but we have built in our laboratory a model of communication, not just a uh, sender receiver, but look at the, the communicational star that we built over the work of like Soren Breer uh, in Europe. Uh, we take many spheres. I was talking about spheres or space a few minutes ago. We take into account the nature, the material and physical world at my left, the biosphere, the nature, the life world. Uh, to build some manufacturing and sustainable gold in the spirit of the sustainable development goal is a social learning process. We have to know the architecture. We don't have to know how to program or know the, all the algorithmic process behind the process, but social sciences have to understand the, the process 
And they have to sit for this, they have to sit down in the same learning room with the engineers and the roboticians. We're talking about individual consciousness to repair, to be resilient from what we have done to our planet. And we're talking about the digital communication because in the manufacturing industry, when we're co-built, when we co-design, when we cooperate, we're speaking about interaction. These are the words in the center of a knowing process that we call communication for ethical human activity development. We have built some models. You know, these models are from informatics and computer science. We have been working on a lot of models. These are very explained in my books, very well explained in my books. From the technological architecture, we need, you know, a physical hardware to talk together today, but we need also socio-technical system. We are speaking this morning in a socio-technical system. All the system, all the socio-technical system are built around an hardware system. But in top of that, we have science, technology, society, nature, and transdisciplinarity at individual level, group, organization, communities of practice, society, and world. I can go forward in this. We've built an old life cycle that we can apply generically to all kinds of process. We explore a problem, we imagine solution, we try to uh, find the best solution, we integrate the technology. That is the most important point. Not all kind of technology. We don't build the technology and say, build the technology and they will come. No, what we want, what are our needs, what are our, our social needs in the future? And then we go in the Canadian Tire catalog to see what is uh, the best technologies helping to modelize. <clears throat> I'm thinking of the virtue of modelizing. You know, you don't have many diagrammatic or schematic uh, interpretation of reality in the social sciences. You have it in management. Management is better well aligned. Is a social science to management, governance. And then we build some prototype from the manufacturing industry. And then, and just after that, because you know, prototyping is not very popular in social science. And then we make a deployment. Um, in the communication science, we have an old model for future development of ecological thinking with the communication process. In going fast, we have a syntactic point of view. You know, this is the first line, physical science, biological science, and human science are put together in a knowledge base for the second level, which is the science policy integration and decision support. The same is for the manufacturing system. Policy and decision making and action is the pragmatic level. The second one, the semantic, is how to make sense of all these technologies, of all these problems, of all these issues, of all these global problematics, as the Club of Rome tell, told us in the 70s. I go further. And I, I'm not going to see, cause, uh, to see the Fab Lab as a transdisciplinary and transformation domain of applied science. But my use case is around that idea that Fab Lab are transdisciplinary and transformative uh, domain for applied science of all kinds. Madame. Mrs. Kotala from Australia have uh, studied many journals. Uh, Fab Lab has transition studies, Fab Lab has social learning. Here are many uh, journal, important journal you will see after the conference. All the domains, you know, you have urban studies or Fab City studies, but computer science, informatics, energy. I'm studying energy when I'm thinking about the human space in the manufacturing, business, business and management, engineering. As you see, you have visual arts, design, media studies. How do you make sense of all these domains, 
or you can make a structural dialogue, good synthesis between people coming from so many much domains of science when you're building a city. You can have Cisco telling uh, Madame Plant, the master of uh, Montreal uh, city, saying, give me four million, I will build you your energy uh, hub, or I will build your energy dashboard. It's not that. Ask the people to engage in a co-creative process that will define by anticipation, that means by abduction and design, what are the main direction for a sustainable Montreal Fab CD. So I will give you the circular business model. The article at all available in, uh, in the internet, it's very recent. Uh, Gutierrez and Al are working uh, since five or six years. It's all young doctoral researchers that uh, made a, a super contribution. So here are their example of a circular business model applied to the lab sector as a sustainable and responsible research. You had the reference here. The title of their activity of their paper is Ecolonic 4.0 Circular Business Model conceptualize sustainable value chain toward digital transitions. Here is the model. The model is complex, but you have many space. They call it a sphere. So their methodology was to review what are the economy and circular business models. What is a circular activity? I have studied for 20 years now, activity theory from Max Leontiev, and Engestrom, maybe you know, people listening to my conference maybe know uh, the good work of uh, Ergo Engestrom in California, but mainly in North European countries like Scandinavia and like in Finland, in Helsinki, where I met Engestrom one day, three or four years ago. And we have to study tools, techniques, and frameworks for circular metabolism. Because when we're talking about evolutionary, evolutionary space or evolutionary spheres or systems, we are talking about natural circular metabolism and what are, at right, the technical circular metabolism. The genius the, of their thinking is they have an olonic enterprise. You know, Arthur Kessler wrote a book 40 or 50 years ago, The Ghost in the Machine. Because this is a complex word to modelize new manufacturing products, services, industries, social uh, systems, or digital institutions. There's not so much work on these days on digital institutions. But when we're building uh, International Fab Lab Network. I'm sorry for my finger left, but this is one of the main points. What could be a human architecture for uh, Industry 4.0 with the philosophy of 5.0 from Japan, which means what could be a model to integrate all these fairs in an ecologic architecture, a systemic architecture, a fractal architecture, to the way to make not a static system, but a circular metabolism, uh, an evolutionary system. Um, I go through these slides because I don't have uh, the genius is how to build a business value chain, but the value chain is the social capital, the human capital, the technological capital that Fab Lab can work on to make or to enable in the sense of the American people, you know, enabling means give me a, a level and I will change the world. So we have to uh, study some business model, but the design of business model for me and them they are talking about Osterwalder and Pigneur, which are two, uh, two researchers, I think, from Switzerland that have built uh, uh, a, a complete methodology of design for any kind of activities. I will show you the next slide. 
it's really important. You know, you have the famous triangle of the activity theory. Maybe some of you uh, understand and have already observed the metabolic shift. What we have here, the technosphere in the very top of the, the triangle is the industrial capital. I call it in my lab, the techno space. Nature space is the natural capital. This is what is the natural capital ne necessary for any kind of individual stakeholder, etc. We have to build in making that a noosphere. Noosphere means the sphere of thinking, but the noosphere is the thinking of humanity, of large community of actors. In the very bottom of the schema, the left, we have the rules. What are the rules of the community? This is the work of uh, Eleanor and Genstrom, the famous uh, um, uh, Nobel Prize of Economy uh, 10 years ago. You have the elements, values, culture, supplier, sustainability, parting of the community. You have the division of labor, but in the Fab Lab, we have to study not only the division of labor, but the coordination, the collaboration pattern that are necessary for the extraction, raw material, manufacture, distribution, use and service, and the end of life in the kind of life cycle analysis. And you know, this is an evolutionary life cycle that begins with an idea, and that finished to a commercialization product. I think that many fab lab uh, in, at this moment understand well what, in this, what is a business model, but not so much a circular business model in the economy to come because we're facing so many innovations that nobody, nobody, no human spirit is able to take the old complexity of the kind of world. But the sociosphere, the social capital that we can share in our Fab Lab network is incredible. This is a, a never seen before in the history capital for human creation and human co-creation design. Here are some relevant models. There's so much to say. The first model is you will see these are the works of uh, three or four youngs from Urbana Champaign in uh, the United States, a model, integrating all the spheres, saying that you have the spatial and temporal patterns, the environment system. At the left, you have the so social ecological process. See, this is a model of design, an integrated trans transdisciplinary model of design. I don't, I don't have many time to, to go further. So I will try to present some other model. One of the model I have worked with for since 2000 is the five edicts model from Karayanis and Campbell coming from Eskovitz and Lidiasdorf in, uh, <clears throat> in, uh, in Europe. Uh, the multi-aspectual model. The multi-aspectual model is just to see that when we are building manufacturing uh, domains, industry, organization, etc., in speaking with transdisciplinary spirit, we're speaking about reviewing how we build digital social system with their many logical, aspectual modalities. And a generic and analytic design model for the manufacturing sector, sector will be present. So I'll go fast. You will see the spirit of my presentation, but all the contents can be presented this morning. Here are the models of uh, Karayanis, the quintuple helix model. In the old blue model, blue is in French, Bureau de Liaison, Enterprise and University. This is two helix, Enterprise, University. When you had the government, you have the education system. When you had the industry, you have the economic system. And when you have the environment, they have decided to build a natural environment section or stakeholder. And the statue of the natural capital in natural environment is this is a real partner. It's not only little birds 
all little rocks. Environment is now a partner of humanity. So it's not the design, uh, not a human-centered design, but this is a world-oriented design for the, I don't know the term in English, but for the, the safeguard of humanity. The other model, the, the other complementary model is multi-aspectual. Do your work, the, uh, is, uh, uh, is from Holland. This is a Dutch philosopher. He has studied about 2000 years of philosophy and he has observed and isolated and described 15 aspects of the world. This 15 aspect, I have studied that are well aligned with, uh, with the sustainable development goals of the United Nations. You have in the bottom uh, a first order, and he is talking about social system C. Uh, in the high left of the, uh, the diagram, you have social system, family, voluntary association, theater, dance company, school, university in the second, and tourist agency, hospital, power plant, airline. All these are potential customers or partners of Fab Lab. They are, they are building complex connected or hyper connected platform networks, collaborative networks of partners. And they have to build around many aspects, which I said before, they are aligned with sustainable goals. You have C under order, numeric, Logical, under matter, regularity, physical, kinetic, spatial order, which is my field of research, vitality, psychic, biologic, intellectual. I was talking about noosphere of uh, Edgar Morin. We have epistemic. How can we study this manufacturing? Informatory. How can we uh, alert people around the needs we have to face? Uh, historical, where we come from. Creda. What values are we valuing uh, in the next year to come or in the next 10 years when we're talking about artificial intelligence? And finally, how to build value sensitive design with the aspect of aesthetic, juridical and ethical aspect. This is a very useful uh, um, model to study. You have uh, five more minutes. Maybe I have to go to my main conclusion. Okay, you will find a Fab Lab model uh, of what I have said this morning. You will have also just a few things around the human factor, but how can we pass from Industry 4.0 that we are building now in many countries? But you know, here in Quebec, in my province in Canada, we're talking about the digital transition. But what is the digital transition for? We have to talk about the value. I, I talk about many values and you will see what are the digital skills like. You got to have in social science, the ability to interact with computers, robots, machine, everything. You know, so it's not for the old people like me, it's for the young people. University have to take the challenge of education and this challenge, is very much around their neural competence. Some of the most important objectives and priorities established in the area of education and training for Horizon 2030 are the following. Enable skills such as problem solving, decision making, leadership, team spirit, entrepreneurship, and multiculturalism. Key to this is knowledge sharing and social learning. Design is a social learning process. We learn in doing, learning by doing. The implementation of a learning factory focuses on the learning by doing, based on dual approach between technology, ecology, and I must say a trial or multi-trial approach with all the, the science we talk today. The development of digital skills and the integration of e-learning in manufacturing by strengthening the links between the academic and professional environment. You know, the link is not on the research part. I know there is a lot of initiative around the world, but more and more social science 
faculties, communication faculties, have to collaborate, to partner in the spirit of the Sustainable Development Goal of the United Nations with the industrial sector, not just the management sector, not just the computer industry, but all kinds of science, because it takes a lot of people to build the village and to build the world. The interest of these objectives and priorities lie in responding to the educational needs demanded by companies in the manufacturing sector in relation to the circular economy model currently proposed. In preparing my little conference, I was talking with colleagues and even my friends, you know, come I'm, I'm, uh, on my holidays, I'm working this morning in front of my lake in a, a little village called saint rita in Canada. I was talking on the beach with my friend and they said, university don't make their role in social sciences for design. Even in the computing industry, they, they call, they call it the human factor or the social factor. We got to go forward further more than that. The human factor must be at the center because we face three hypotheses in the future. The robots are dominating us. We are working with robots, the second hypothesis or the second uh, proposition. And the third one is we, we are still the king of you uh, of the world and uh, we are in the at the top of the, the transformation of the world. I think this is the main question for the next future to come. And I think uh, you'll see in my uh, last slide that the management of neurocompetence is one of the great challenge. Uh, I see Norella coming back and uh, uh, I, I, she maybe realized that an old professor is still talking. I am. <laughs> and I'm winning my life with my mom. Minutes, so you have been like talking all over. So don't worry, but just start wrapping up. <laughs> okay. So I'll go to my conclusion. I think society 5.0, a society when we put humanity at the center and uh, the attributes and the constellation of attributes like harmony between people, harmony between organization and university and people and all kind of domain is not something that, that is coming and that we have to adapt to, but something that we have to co-create. The manufacturing industry needs this societal and design engagement from multiple actors. Japan was the originator of Society 5.0, but here in social sciences, we've been talking about that since the 60s and the 70s. This is the main point the critical point of the social sciences. This morning, I'm just trying to say, let's put this great faculty of analysis in the service of the design to be proactive. We believe that the makers movement, the Fab City movement are excellent places and spaces to begin to build a society, not only more human, but more world oriented as a participatory world enabled by eco-design for organic and systemic sphere space for the activities aiming at co-create new business model for responsible and sustainable research and innovation fab labs. I think this is our mission. I think this is a great challenge for all of us. Thank you very much. Sorry to have been so long. And I thank you, Norella, for uh, your advice. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining the session. We went a little bit over, but it was super interesting to hear uh, our professor here uh, with all that he wanted to say. So I just leave him to, and since we had some spare time, we could leave it. So uh, thank you so much for joining us during this session. You are welcome to join other sessions that will be starting like in 10 minutes. So thank you so much. <laughs>